With Nigeria set to take another step on her democratic journey with this weekend's governorship election in Edo State, the issue of electoral reform is again being played up by those who feel that lack of commitment to true electoral reform will ultimately lead to a concentration of power in the hands of a powerful few. In their considered opinion, a slide into one party state can only be a recipe for disaster in an entity with such multiplicity of ethnicities and other persuasions like Nigeria. Professor Obiora Okonkwo is an entrepreneur and politician. He joins us now to share his thoughts on the possibility of this scenario, petrol price and drama, party politics, and general state of the nation. Great to have you on Newsday. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. Talk to us about your thoughts about this notion that Nigeria is driving or moving towards a one-party state. Yes, um, I share the same concern like you have just said. But you see, the, I can see the opposition party not living up to the expectation. Because opposition actually is an integral part of a democratic process. It is healthy for democracy. It is useful also even for government in power. You know, because it is this moment, as soon as the election is over, and winners emerge, especially in the national uh, arena, the opposition party are supposed to get themselves together. In this case, in Nigeria, we're talking about PDP, which is a major political party. We had expected them to get their acts light, mobilize the entire political uh, opponents. You know, in this case, we're talking about Labour Party, NMPP, and other, other smaller parties. And um, at the same time, start presenting creating what might be looking as a shadow government. A segment in the sense that within this opposition period, the ruling party normally, in a normal situation, will look at every policy they take, their ruling and, the, and, 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 and the implementation as a possible chance of winning the next election. But the opposition party, on the other hand, are supposed to be under their own party platform, presenting their own views and opinions of, the, of their own party, which may be in support or against the policies of the ruling political party. With this, they have about four years to start preparing themselves for the next election. While the ruling party are using their policies to endear themselves to the electorate, but today, that's not what we are saying, because PDP has more of internal problems among themselves that have not been able to gather themselves together. On the other hand, Labour Party actually has a strong voice of opposition, which is in their presidential candidate in the last election. But actually, when this opposition voice is resonating from an individual voice, it looks more like an activist. You know, it has to be on a party platform, with strong party manifestos that is obvious for everyone. This was done extremely and excellently very well by uh, ACN of those days that was able to mobilize the entire political parties and the other oppositions of PDP and President Golo Jonathan that they came into APC. They were very voiceforous, very strong and very dynamic that up to today, some of their views in those era are being referred to today in the governance of um, APC. Therefore, I should expect PDP to quickly get their ass together, not to opposing themselves internally, and learn from the, the process that made a new political party defeat an incumbent government in Nigeria. That is what it should be. As a matter of fact, President Tinubu, He's a grandfather of opposition party in Nigeria. He was at one point 
the, on, the only AD uh, governor in the Southwest. Of he course. sustained the opposition. He was at Nadeko. So you understand the value of opposition. It's good for both the government and it's good for the people at the end of the day. So All right, it's Professor. something that must be encouraged. It's something that is needed. Yeah. Well said, Professor Biara. Thank you for giving us your assessment of the current state of the opposition parties in Nigeria. But what structural and systemic changes would you recommend that would foster a more robust multi-party democracy? Honestly speaking, from my own view, those structures are already on ground. Our constitution allows it. The electoral laws are, allows it. But it's just the political practitioners to understand that opposition is a, a dynamic part of the democratic process. So they have to put it into practice. There's no new thing that is expected. But what we see today, more or less, everyone wants to join the ruling party for whatever reason best known to them. Some people say it's politics of stomach. I can understand. It should not be a ruling party that will, that will give you all you need to be in opposition. Actually, as a matter of fact, they should be doing everything they can legitimately to weaken the opposition to make their next election easier. So I will only think that what we require now is the practice of the opposition by the political practitioners. The, law, the laws and every structure is already in place for that. Well, talking about uh, political parties, we know that uh, there are several political parties, even though there are some prominent ones. And uh, it seems like uh, most of our political parties do not really have ideologies because we see the cross carpeting that happens and also the saying that there is no, you know, permanent, there are no permanent friends in politics, only permanent interest. How do we get to that point where we have ideologies? In fact, you see some people Okay, a few people in some parties, but also showing interest or, or dancing to the tunes of another party. And uh, it looks like there is really no clear cut divide amongst the political parties that we have. How do we have that uh, system where we have political parties that have different strong ideologies uh, to push for a stronger democracy in the country? Uh I am really um, afraid that I cannot give you that hope that it will happen tomorrow because um, that will only be the case when you have people with ideology, with certain values, start practicing politics. But as so far our political process remains uncertain and rough, these people shy away from engaging in political activities. So, so long you continue to have people who see politics as a business and not an act of um, service and development, they will continue to move from political party together, uh, from political party to order. Uh, that's why this uh, adage will remain very popular that it's not about interest. It's not about political party, but it's about interest. Ideology matter. For instance, in, in America today, election is going on, you know, campaign is very robust. Any voter will tell you why he should vote Republican Party based on the policy. It could be on tax, it could be on immigration, it could be on, um, on gun or, or abortion. That's where you have politics of value, politics of ideology, politics of issue. So it's really quite unfortunate. So when we clean up the system and there is we have free and fair election that will ensure and guarantee some people who are still outside the political ecosystem to come in. It's only when they do that, they can change the process from inside. But as long as remain the political jobbers and, um, and don't hold those who see politics as purely a daily business, I am afraid yeah, it will still take a longer time. Speaking of business, uh, given your experience both as an entrepreneur and a political aspirant, how do you evaluate the intersection of business interests and party politics in terms of you thinking, possibly thinking that there might be inherent conflicts that might need to be addressed? 
Well, it's so intertwined now that I'm so scared. As a matter of fact, um, some political office holders will be rubbing it off their face that they are there for their business. If you recall, in the early part of this phase of our democracy, since 2000 to 2010, one of the best-selling um, news, uh, newspaper items on the street used to be a, a, the, the, the government gazette on procurement uh, publication. You know, you have to buy uh, the gazette where different ministries and agencies advertise jobs that um, they are asking for people to bid. These days, I don't see them on the street because some of these jobs are already decided before even their budgetary approval is given, and they're already belonging to one political figure or the other. So it is purely business, and that makes it really very dangerous for us. So in the past, you have people who are in politics because they are given to it. They are people who, belong, who believe in service. Then they relate with, with business people who one word or other support their financial need, but do the polit we do the business aspect of the job when it comes. But today, every political office holder, from state assembly to national assembly and all the places, have their companies, they have their colonies, they do the job. So they're so intertwined, they're inseparable now, and it's very, 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 very dangerous. Something must be done about it. And again, it still points down to the fact that those so far, some people who get into this business or politics say it as purely business. Um, the remedy will not come very soon. Mm. Now let's uh, talk about the state of the nation, especially when it comes to uh, the price of PMS, that's petrol. Uh, there have been controversies surrounding the fixing of the price by the uh, NNPCL. And of course, we saw the uh, reports by the SAN, uh, Femi Falano, saying that uh, NNPCL fixing the price is against Section 205 of the Petroleum Industry Act. What are your thoughts on this? Yes, that's really a, um, a big conflict. It's a deregulated sector, and I'm getting in to fix the price. I share Falana's position on that, um, but I hope that this should be something that will not be permanent. It could be for intervention. But NMP should come clean and let people know how long this is going to last and they reassure us that, that the Petroleum Industry Act should, should, be, should be in practice because um, there are a whole lot of aspect of it that is very genuine and very good for the industry. So with all these things coming in from the back door, that is a clear violation of that, and I do not expect that coming from an NMPC. There should be another way to get this petroleum product to people at a cheaper price than just fixing the prices. And if, for instance, that we can now see that Dangote has been able to do in a couple of years what the entire NMPC has not done in, in many decades, there are more questions for them to, to answer than just grabbing Dangote's product and determining the price. That's really not what we expect. Well, there's certainly more questions for them to answer, like you alluded to. And we have a final question for you before we let you go, Professor. How do you evaluate the impact of Nigeria's federal system on party politics and governance in terms of how it might be contributing to the risk of a one-party state? Well, one-party state is very dangerous for Nigeria with multiple ethnicity. It's very, very dangerous. Our constitution is very, very uh, convenient for multiple party system, but it's, it's all left in the hands of politicians. So, um, and then I think also that until we stop this act of uh, uh, winner takes all, where when you win, you're able to accommodate other political interests who have better views to deliver for the services of the people. But so far, that is not the case. Um, it's a very dangerous phenomenon. But I don't think it will lead to that. From all the signals that we are getting, uh, PDP seems to be fighting to put their acts together internally. They might come up with something that might have a resemblance of opposition. But until that time comes, 
um, I just hope it will not be too long. So I, I wouldn't really want to pray to see such a one-party state. Nigeria is so huge and so big for that. And we should stop seeing democracy as just election, election that comes after every four years. I repeat, opposition continues to be part of a political democratic system. It makes it robust and it gives you a longer time to present yourself, your manifesto, what you would have done differently compared to the ruling party from the state to federal level. All right, um, and in, but you know, you that's see, a the, fine eco place the, the economic the situation has not helped matters. Mm. Thank you mm. so much, It takes a lot Professor. of funding to, to, to be in opposition. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your thoughts on this issue.